What's going on YouTube? Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. As most of you know, I'm a little bit of a keen sneakerhead. And unfortunately today is the day I'm going to throw a few of my pairs away because basically my house is way too full of crap and I need to get rid of the pairs that I no longer wear. But before I do so, I thought I would take you through a little bit of an insight into my current sneaker collection and show you a few of my faves as well as ones that I'm probably going to get rid of and, and not, uh, not think twice about again. So I keep all of my sneakers in the one cupboard. It's a very handy little arrangement I've got going on, a bit of a hanging arrangement. Uh, this is where I keep most of them. So a few of the other pairs that I typically wear are scattered around the house, they're under the bed, they're in my other cupboard. Um, I'm not one of those people who collects sneakers and doesn't wear them. I love to wear the sneakers that I own. I don't see any point in owning sneakers and not wearing them. Even the uh, more rare ones that I have, which aren't that many, uh, I like to wear because they're cool and I love them. So here they are. So, this is my cupboard. You can see there's a few slots missing. Some of my favorite ones down the bottom, some of the bigger ones. But anyway, I'll take you through pair by pair. If you guys don't like sneakers, then just feel free to, to turn this off right now, because this is, this is not even close to being fitness related. All right, first pair is a pair of LeBron 12s. Went through a bit of a basketball phase at one stage. Color scheme on these is sick, but I've got a pretty wide foot, so they're not all that comfortable to be honest. They're a little bit too narrow for my feet. I actually have two pairs of these in the limited edition orange colorway as well. I'll be honest, I only really bought these because I thought they'd be super rare. I did wear them a couple of times, but again, same issue as the other ones. Too narrow for my feet. Really, really uncomfortable after like half an hour. Not ideal. What do you reckon, mate? Not interested. Okay, moving on, got a couple of pairs of Jordans. These are actually the first pairs of high tops I ever ordered and felt reasonably confident in rocking. I felt like when I first started wearing high tops, that I wasn't really sure I could pull them off, but uh, now zero is given. Um, I just buy the shoes and wear the ones that I really, really like. These are super comfortable. I just don't really wear them anymore because, uh, just because I've got other ones that I prefer. They still look wicked though, big fan. Grey goes with everything. If you guys don't have grey sneakers or grey shoes, like you're missing out. All right, starting a little bit higher now. These are the Nike Air Command Forces. I love these sneakers. These are so badass. Again, not the most comfortable shoe, but hey, style isn't always comfortable. These things are just so tight. Big fan. I know I said I'm uh, throwing a lot out, but these ones are not going anywhere. Okay, so next up we've got the Kobe Wathers. Seriously high sneakers again. These things are a serious statement. As you can see, they don't match. They are asymmetrical and they look absolutely wicked on. I don't play basketball, but as I said, went through a bit of a basketball phase and these things look sensational. Then over here, we've got the Nike Marksman, which is a pretty wicked little minimalist style high top. Love these bad boys because there's no laces. They're super comfortable for a change because, as I said, I've got really big feet. I wear size 13. It's a pain in the ass. But my feet are really wide as well. But these work out well. My feet fit in them nicely. Okay, so next up, we've got the old Faithful. These are probably the oldest pair of Supras I own. They have seen some serious mileage. You can see they're pretty worse for wear. I even tried cleaning them a few times and they're nowhere near the color that they were when I first bought them. These have seen many an expo uh, and many a flight. I typically travel in these because, again, they're super comfortable. I love my white stuff. My white sneakers, white watches. The only problem is it's so hard to keep clean. Although, if you check out my Ewing high tops, these things are fresh as the day that I got them. Pretty cool these shoes, they're really big though. They feel seriously huge on my feet. Which isn't a bad thing. As I said, I've got big feet, so they're a bit of a statement. But I think I just like those more to look at rather than to wear. I do wear them, I just appreciate them more off my foot than on, if that makes sense. All right, so next up we've got the Air Harachis. These are one of the first Harachis that came out. As you can see, I've taken the laces out because it's been that long since I've worn them. I needed a fresh pair of white ones on the Supras that I just showed you guys. So I threw that in there from these. 
Not my favourite sneaker, I actually regretted ordering these once I got them. Really heavy and clunky looking on my feet, I really didn't like them. Kept them for good measure though. And then over here, wicked little turquoise Jordan reveal numbers. I love these sneakers. Seriously rare colorway, I've never seen anyone else wear them. Got them for the Olympia Expo last year. I drove like two hours out of town the night before the Expo just to make sure I could rock them on the day. Guys, I'm gonna run you guys through a couple of the custom pairs of sneakers I got now. So these are some Jordans. These are done by Kakaso, if you guys know him on Instagram. He's actually done a lot of my shoes. These are pretty wicked. I forget the name that he actually called them. But uh, these have gone one wear. Never again worn after the expert that I got them for. And then these are a Bel Air inspired Roche by De Jesus Custom Footwear. Throw up all these tags on the video so you guys can check them out and grab some if you want. So sticking with the customs, we've got another Bel Air style Roche, which is again by the same designer. These are wicked. Still super white, super fresh. And then these, I believe, whilst a sort of similar design, slightly different colours, inspired by the what the very similar to the Kobe's that uh, I showed you guys just before. A couple more pairs of customs here. So I'll start with the highlighter roche, these are sick. Serious head turn up. Never worn these and not been asked where or what the hell they are. Another Kikaso inspired shoe. You probably you guys have probably seen these being rocked by Devon Physique if you guys follow that guy. Or if you came and met me at the Arnold last year in, uh, in Melbourne. And then these, uh, <laughs> ordered specially for the Ohio Arnold last year, which has just gone by. These are Janoski Maxes, which are probably one of the most comfortable sneakers you will ever wear. So before my foot is quite wide, and these are super wide, a little bit flatter, which makes them really, really comfortable. I've actually only worn these for that one expo as well. Definitely need to rock those again, though. I like those. All right, so I mentioned the Janoski Maxes were super comfortable, as is evident by the amount of pairs I have. These grey units with the teal tick are one of my favourite shoes I own. They are probably worn more than any other shoe, which is why they look a little bit crappy, as I said. Grey goes with everything. Bought these thinking they were fresh because I love that teal colour. Just didn't end up loving them quite as much as the first pair. And these, not sure whether these were a mistake or not, because I've only worn them once or twice. Most people think they're disgusting, look like I vomited on them, and I would probably tend to agree with that. Okay, so I showed you guys before, I've got a fair few pairs of Roches, both custom and not. So here's just a basic fresh white pair. It took me ages to hunt these down because they were super popular and I missed the first run by a long way. And then I felt like I really needed a red shoe in my repertoire because part of my work uniform is red and, well, let's be real, colour coordination is life. And these cool little black numbers actually have a little Hulk mural decorated on the shoe and in the swoosh. Which I think is pretty cool because they're designed after old mate right here. Went through a wicked little phase two of Nike free runs and these fours were absolute fire I thought. I love the teal colour, love anything bright orange just come at me. Everything bright orange can come at me. And these taste little grey numbers, I couldn't go without either. Again, a really nice wide shoe here, which meant I didn't have to worry about my feet feeling super constricted. Really good leg day shoe, obviously not for squats or deads, but I found afterwards, because it's such a flat shoe, it's almost like an extension of a sock. They were really good for things like walking lunges and the rest of my leg day accessory work. Okay, the first time I ever bought any form of colored or bright or loud sneakers it was the Nike Free Run 5.0. Now I know these look All right, so if you guys haven't noticed I go through trends where I find a sneaker, I love it, either custom look or you know I like I love the look rather or I love the colorway or I love the fit and I go out and pretty much buy a whole bunch of them because I figure they fit well, they look awesome and if I can get different colors then well why not. So this is the Nike Flyknit Racer. These are wicked. They're a little bit more, they are a little bit narrower through the foot, but I can still wear them okay. So we've got wicked little green and pink numbers here. 
These are the brand new Oreo ones. Thank you, Nick Vavitas, for scoring me these. All pink because, well, let's be real, who has pink sneakers? These are sick. And then orange and pink as well. Basically the exact same reason I bought these because no one wears pink sneakers and they seriously look at me. So a couple of random entries here. I used to wear ASICs all the time because they are super comfortable. They're just not really as athletic looking as most Nikes and Jordans. So that, that trend sort of died off for me. But these are probably the most comfortable of the ASICs shoes I ever owned. Plus they look kind of cool and I love the colors. Plus, if I do ever go for a run, which is very rare, but occasionally I get sucked into one, uh, I need a shoe with a little bit more support than like a Nike Free Run or a Flyknit Racer. So these end up providing that support for me in a similar fashion to these Nikes. I don't even know what these ones are called because I just kept them because I love the whole hot yellow and hot pink. Sorry, fluoro yellow and hot pink. And they still look super, super fresh. All right, my favorite and most comfortable trend yet, as far as sneakers are concerned, are the Jordan Eclipse. These are hands down the comfiest sneaker I wear. I said before those gray Janoski Maxes were my most worn shoe. That was probably a lie because these Jordans have seen more miles than most. They look wicked. These are a little bit dirty, even though I clean them all the time. I've got them in black and red. Nice little red undertone there. The grey combo. Fluorescent orange, as I said. Anything fluorescent orange can come at me thick and fast. They just look wicked. They've got a nice little gold Jordan logo at the back. And then, of course, it wouldn't be complete without an all-white version because white is the best. If you guys check out the progress so far, you'll see quite a fair bit of white. Nearly forgot my other pair of Supras. I got a black pair as well because you got to be versatile. I dig these. Good little change up. A little bit of an olive sole there. Versatile. All right, that brings me to the last two pairs, which are probably my my favourite two pairs at the moment. So here is the Jordan Six Black Cat. These are very fresh, they're pretty much straight black with a few little touches of white. Again, super comfy for sort of a mid size shoe. I wear them really loose, but I dig them. Also, you don't see them around that much. And I love that exclusivity, which is why these are probably my favorite at the moment because they are the most rare sneaker that I own. Again, Nick Vavitas, thank you for getting me both of these. You legend. The V2 Copper Yeezys. Go and Google these and see what they're worth on eBay, because I sure as hell tell you I wouldn't be paying what they're asking. They're sick, but again, four-figure shoe on resale is ridiculous in my mind. But they look fresh because no one has them. There you have it. That's my sneaker collection. I think that makes 35 pairs, which is a little bit... Actually, it's probably not as bad as some guys. In fact, I've seen a lot of guys on social media have way worse than that. 35 as of today, I'm probably going to ditch 10 to 15 pairs today, unfortunately. It's a sad, sad day, but at the same time, my wardrobe space is going to thank me for sure. Something a bit different today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you follow me on Snapchat where you can actually sort of interact with me a little bit more than maybe you could on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. We will chat there and I'll make sure to keep all my future releases under wraps, but all my future releases will be on Snapchat as well. I've also got my personal Instagram profile if you guys want to follow me there to see a little bit more about what I do in my spare time, the sort of things I like outside of fitness and outside of the gym. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.